Hello everybody, it's Joe here and welcome to London Victoria. Today we are on Train Sim World 3 and we're going to be driving this uh, this Gatwick Express Class 387 electric multiple unit down towards Gatwick Airport. Now we're at London Victoria. Uh, I am just getting the cab set up. We need to get these, uh, hang on, we need to get the doodars on, don't we? Uh, wait till 9.30. Where's the, where's these? Right, Vigilance Normal. DSD normal. I, I really do loathe the fact that uh, that train sim starts with all your safety systems isolated. It would be so much better if it started with them not isolated, and you actually had to. Uh, oh, there we go. The tail lights are on. Yeah, you actually had to isolate them if you didn't want to play with them isolated. Or oh, something in the settings menu, which actually, as I realise, uh, I need to uh, to go into HUD and gameplay. These are all off. That's good. Right. Okay. <coughs> yeah, so uh, journey time today, if we have a look on the schedule, we're going to leave at 9.28, we get to Gatwick Airport at 10am, so it's half an hour's journey, uh, and of course it's a next stop journey. Now I am using the, uh, of course it's the Trenton World Dynamic Weather, I'm going to just pop you in forwards, actually no we're not, we're going to put you in neutral because of course the doors are open. Now... Uh, yeah, we're going to be, uh, it's a non-stop service, we're using the dynamic weather which comes with Trends in World 3 and I've clicked light clouds, because I've looked out my window and there are light clouds, so I thought we'd, we'd put that on and just see what happens. You know, usually I plump for it clear, because I've got absolutely no imagination. Oh look, there's a 465 over there, lovely. Right, five seconds before we're going to going to close the doors. I know it's not telling me to do so, but... Uh, of course, we want to get the wheels turning on time, don't we? There we go. Right. Here we are. Away we go. Let's, uh, let's actually get up to some speed. We might race that 465. I reckon we can... Uh, yeah, these things are quicker than 465s, aren't they? Possibly not. Oh, we're speeding. Oh, dear me. Yeah. Okay, Joe. Come on. Professionalism. I do like the fact that, obviously, this London to Brighton route, if you do have uh, the South Eastern... Uh, route DLC, it adds the 465 on. I like that. Same as if you've got the Great Western, it'll add the 166 around Gatwick Airport, uh, which you can actually drive. What I do like about this is the oh, look at that. That is, uh, that is a good, that is a lovely photo. Look at that. Coming out of uh, London, Victoria. Oh, he's off look, isn't he? Don't know quite. There we go. Just have a little bit of coasting. It's quite a difficult one coming out of Victoria, particularly with the uh, with the 387, because it's quite quick in notch one. So you can't just leave it in notch one to, to just kind of power up the hill. There we go. Maybe it'll be a bit slower now that we're all on the uphill. See, that's what I wanted. I wanted to leave it in notch one, and it just hold it at 20. Of course, the, uh, the 387 doesn't have speed set, unlike the 377, which is a little bit... Uh, a little bit weird, isn't it? Oh, look, he's going. He's going without us. We can't allow this to happen, people. I'll tell you that now. Right, so, yeah, we're 23 miles away. Half an hour's journey. I reckon we can do that fairly easily. This particular London commuter... Uh, is it London commuter? Oh, look at that. We're, we're just there a little bit. Oh, we're, we're going past him. Is he stopping? Oh, no, he's off to the left. Okay. I take that as a win. We're going past him fast. There you go. Look at that. Brilliant. Yeah, this is one of my favourite DLCs simply because of the sheer amount of traffic. The amount of, of, There's like over a thousand playable services on this. So really, if you are one of these people that likes to tick off the scenarios, you like to complete each available service, there's so much gameplay in this for you. For the price of the DLC. There really, really is so much gameplay. And um, of course, for me, it's it's one of the first decent UK routes. I mean, what have we got? We've got the Great Western add-on, which is London to Reading. That's about half an hour, isn't it? Um, it's not really a great amount of route, is it? What are the UK routes? The Trans Pennine, but that's obviously set in, in historical times. I, I prefer the modern day routes, of course, because like, I, don't, I don't remember the historical times because I, I wasn't here, you know, so... Uh, yeah, and I definitely prefer these routes, of which I think that this is really, really good. I think the scenery is awesome. Uh, it's got the odd little glitch. The odd little glitch. I don't know how these are light clouds. This is just... I would say this was clear. I'd absolutely say this was clear, wouldn't you? 
We're having another. We're having another. Oh, look at that. With the power station in the background. Lovely. I didn't realise we'd slowed down so much. Never mind. Okay, yeah, there's light clouds ahead. I'll I'll give them that. It does look pretty good, doesn't it, the weather? I'm I'm still I mean this is obviously a Train Sim World 2 route. So I don't think it looks as good as the Train Sim World 3 routes, to be perfectly honest with you. I just think that the Train Sim World 3 routes just they're a bit more like kind of they they just look better. I th I don't know if they've got a better team of people in or if they've just got more experience with route building, but yeah, I definitely think that uh, the, the Trends of World 3 routes are much better. Not saying that this is a bad one, of course, because like I said, this is my favourite one. You've got the variations of the Electrostar. I have no idea how you put that light on at the front. Does anyone else know how you put that on? No idea. I mean, it'll probably be up by the lights thing. Look at that. We're, uh, we're flying. Flying 60 mile an hour through Clapham Junction there. I wonder if it is up there. Tail lights, master lights. No, it's not, is it? Hmm. I don't know. No, I'm not entirely sure. Not entirely sure at all. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it, that the 387s, given that they were designed for, for long distance routes, because when you think the 387 was, uh, they entered service with Gatwick Express. Uh, they entered service with Thameslink, which is like Bedford to Brighton. Uh, of course, Great Northern. They're long routes, aren't they? Where they're going to be running at speed for you know for very fairly long periods of time. Gatwick Express are obviously express services. Um, again, Thameslink. Okay, maybe Thameslink isn't. You know, maybe there's not as many express services with Thameslink, but it just seems an odd decision given that the three seven sevens have the speed set. For these not to, you know, because it's obviously possible, you know, the technology is there by Bombardier because they have it. Yeah. It just seems a little odd that they wouldn't include it on the 377s. Maybe they went uh, on the 387s, sorry. Maybe they just went a bit cheaper. Ooh. I do wish it would just clip through the, uh, the scenery rather than bounce you backwards and forwards. Nope, we've gone to 70. Oh, we're going to be racing another service here, look. The 387 does seem weirdly slow. Like, I don't know if it's because it's on third rail rather than AC. But, uh, yeah, it just seems when you put your foot down. Like now, full power. It's not speeding up very quick, is it? Has anyone else experienced that? I think the 377 feels a lot quicker. And of course, I just love the fact that, like, there's just so much traffic. I don't think you could have this much traffic in a train sim scenario, could you, like, for train sim classic? There's, there's just traffic everywhere. Oh, it would absolutely take you forever to, like, script it all in. I think it's fantastic. I, do you know what? I really do like the concept of Trends in World. Trends in World gets a really hard time. Uh, myself included, I think Dovetail have a history of being particularly lazy um, with this. And of course, they will probably argue that that's not the case. But from a consumer point of view, there are a lot of things with the Train Simulator franchise, be it Train Sim Classic or Train Sim World, where it feels like a lot of corners are cut at the expense of quality. Um, you know, maybe cost saving, maybe things like that. But yeah, it does feel that there's there's a lot of corners cut. But the concept of Trains in World 2, I love the idea that you can get out of your train and walk around and have a look at the different stations. I like the idea that you can drive this down to Gatwick Airport now and then I can put the tail light on, change ends, and drive back again in service. You know, you don't have to exit the scenario. You don't have to make another scenario for the return journey. You can just literally drive there Drive back again, drive back again, drive back again. Oh, I'm bored of the 387 now. So when we get back to Victoria, I'll just walk across to a different platform. Hop in a 377. Way, bang, off we go. 
You know, so I, I like that. I think that's brilliant. It adds a sense of realism. And you could technically, if you really wanted to, you know, take it further, you could see if you could find, like, diagrams of actual work from train drivers for this region and, like, just do a full nine-and-a-half-hour shift. You know, just drive up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, have a break, a bit more. You know, you, you could really take that level of kind of... I mean, that is committed to the cause, isn't it? It's absolute commitment to the cause, but it's... Hypothetically, you can do that. Oh, can you just get back from the side, please? Thank you. Hey, dear me, where are we now? We're East Croydon, yeah, one mile, right, we'll, we'll just coast a little bit, because obviously there's a 60 zone coming up in a mile. Oh, Gatwick Express coming the other way. Oh, they do stand very close to the edge. I, I think that dovetails should address that. They should get them just stood a little bit further back because it's, uh, it's a little bit worryingly close, isn't it? Oh, there we go. Slowing down a little bit. We're... Uh, we're going to be on the approach to East Croydon now. You'll see the lines coming from uh, from London Bridge on your left hand side. I mean, like in a little bit, not just yet. Soon, soon though, promise you. Of course, this 45 is where we'll be slowing down for uh, for East Croydon. You've got lines going down there. This is what I love about that London to Brighton line. Look, there's there's just things everywhere. Like you can see that that's probably coming from London Bridge down there. Look, and we're going to go overhead. It's it's just look at that. Oh, hang on. Look at that. How that that you know that's flown underneath us. So yeah, there's there's just that level of. You get that certain level of like kind of Im the fact that it's alive. You know, there's just trains everywhere all the time, diving under you, flying over you. It's you know the, the, you just don't get that a lot of the time with trains in classic. Don't get me wrong, you do sometimes, like, some of the scenarios for, uh, oh, what, which one is it now? London to, uh, London to, uh, Ipswich, on the Great Eastern. That's one where you get lots of things coming past you, but it has to warn you, ooh, just, you know, your game might crash. Oh, hang on. There's me, absolutely flying through a red signal. Shouldn't really have to use full service, you should just merely be paying attention. Right, I am going to leave us cruising at about 15. And the reason I say that is, of course, we're, uh, we're going to just coast through because I don't want to stop in this platform because we're not booked to stop here. So it's good practice not to stop because passengers on the station won't take into account the fact that our train is red. They'll just think it's, you know, oh, it's the Brighton train, it's here now. And they'll be trying to get on and obviously... You don't want to be setting off with passengers trying to board your train. You know, they might have a foot on the step and that won't look good. So if you keep moving, albeit slowly. There we go, we'll just plod at, uh, at 30 because we've got a red in front what I do like as well as this is like I mean the, it, everything isn't just running to time is it because if everything was running to time I wouldn't be crawling like this I'm obviously sat behind another service oh I can see that it's gone yellow up ahead so we'll, uh, we'll speed up a bit yeah I'm obviously sat behind another service I like the fact that you get a bit of uh, you know a bit of running uh, following yellows 
chasing the yellows, riding the yellows, however you, uh, whatever you wish to call it. I like that. It's nice. Double yellow. All oh, right. Well, we can. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just put our foot down and up for the best then. Maybe fifty. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll go with fifty because it gives the other uh, the other train in front chance to get ahead. And if we get a single uh, a single yellow, it gives us a chance to uh, to slow down. Double yellow. Lovely. This is proper commuter driving, isn't it? Following the uh, the service behind, the service in front even. How can you follow the service behind? That's just silly. Uh, yeah, proper following the service in front, catching it up, having to slow down, having to almost stop. This is like proper London commuter train driving, isn't it? But at the same time, keeping, you know, keeping up with it. Because if I'm going slow like this, there'll be something hot on my heels that's following me. You know, you can almost guarantee it, can't you? I always just think when I come down to London, it's just a whole other world compared to up north. The block sections are so small, the frequency of trains is just absolutely mental. I mean, I'm not going to be one of those people that's going to stand there going, Oh, southerners don't know how lucky they are, but oh my goodness me. The, the infrastructure, the level of infrastructure down here to what we have up in the north is just unbelievable. It really, really is. The, 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 the level of infrastructure is... I mean, like, look, all these lines around here. Could you imagine this volume of trains going through Manchester Piccadilly? Heck, that would be some a hell of a delay, 13 and 14. It very much reminds me of the Thameslink Corridor, but, like, not as good. You know, because, like, Thameslink have a train every 30 seconds or whatever, whatever ridiculous amount of uh, frequency. Ooh, back from the edge, please, missus. Yeah, whatever frequency they have, it's, it's just ludicrous, isn't it, down Thameslink? But uh, it just wouldn't be able to happen in the north. Oh, hang on, seven. Oh, it's only if we're going left that it goes to 70. So that does not apply to us. Just stick at 75, I'm sure that'll be fine. We've got 12 miles and 14 minutes to do it. So we're actually already slightly ahead, which is good news. There we go, still on the double yellows. So that thing in front is obviously not doing 90, is it? I think the speed limit is 90 down this particular section of line. It's obviously not doing 90 because I'm just sat at 75 and it's not getting further in front. Ooh, we've got a green. Right, let's put his foot down. We'll get up to line speed now. I've not got that sunflower lit up. I don't need to slow down. And of course it's got those run sounds as you're flying along. I think it was Armstrong Powerhouse that did the sounds for this, wasn't it? Really, really good. They d they work well as a team, Dovetail Games and Armstrong Powerhouse. Yeah, I believe it was them, wasn't it? Because it's very, very similar to the Enhancement Pack. I wish that all, with all future routes, Dovetail would work with Armstrong Powerhouse because Armstrong Powerhouse get the physics and the sounds right, and that is normally where Dovetail are lacking. Dovetail Games, don't get me wrong, they can make an immaculate model. Let's have one there, that'll do. Yeah, they're really, really good at the modelling. 
but I just find that a lot of the time it's the sounds and the physics, and that's that's just where Armstrong Powerhouse get it right. It really, really is. So yeah, as far as I, you know, as far as I'm concerned, they can work together again in the future for all UK stuff because we'll have a really, really good simulator on our hands then. Well, until Trends in World 4 comes out in like another year or two. Flying along. This is a little bit weird what happens with the lighting in the tunnels. I'm still not quite convinced I like it. Oh, something coming the other way. That looks good. But yeah, like this random section of light in front, is it the end of the tunnel? I don't think it is. Yeah, it's not the the lights kind of. Uh, oh no, it's the end of the tunnel. Ah, oh, right, okay, that's good. We've actually got up to ninety. Look at that. I like how it's dark. Is it going to go really light when we pop out? Not as light as I thought it would, but yeah, that that was really really good. Okay, yeah, okay. I said I didn't like the light. It's it's pretty good. It's really good getting up to some high speed running, isn't it? I say high speed, it's not high speed in comparison to like the southeastern high speed. But you know, 90 is fairly decent, isn't it? It's not to be sniffed at. that we're absolutely flying along six miles in ten minutes I reckon we're gonna catch this thing up whatever it is in front unless we've yeah we don't seem to be catching it now do we it's really really gone in front it's gone a long way in front it just seems like six miles in ten minutes I, I feel like we're ahead of schedule like quite a bit so maybe we're gonna end up stopping further down the line Ooh, what's happening? There's there's grass coming through the top of the tunnel. Ah, now here we go. This is the this is what I mean. Look, the light is in the tunnel. Why is that happening? That should not be happening. I love the little rattle sounds just as you're going along. Really random rattle sounds. From, I'm assuming. I mean, I've, I've never been in the cab of a 377, a 387, an Electro style, we'll just say. But I imagine it's this, this door here that obviously you can shut sometimes. Albeit, oh, there, there we go. Look, there's, there's, there's doors that you can open and shut like this here. I reckon that that'll rattle because I used to work the 350s back in the day. And uh, they used to rattle. The cab doors would rattle on them. Like that. There we go. Yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, the cab doors would rattle something chronic on them when you were going along and it was going... Do -do 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 -do. You know, I used to scrumple up bits of ticket roll and plug it in the door so that it would stop banging and clattering as you were going along. It'd be... Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm, I just imagine that that's kind of where that comes from. If so, love it. Really, really love it. up to 90. I wonder if our little friends on those uh, on the slower lines on the right hand side. Oh, 
hang on, we're, uh, we're going down a lot. Wait, right, let's get a bit of braking on. Oh, I spy with my little eye something beginning with a yellow signal. We are catching it. Mind you, we're only two miles from Gatwick Airport. How on earth did that happen? We're seven minutes early. We are, like, seriously good at this. Either that or we were expecting something in front that's been cancelled. There we go. It did say it had gone to 60, didn't it? I don't know if the points have changed, maybe for that thing in front, but now it's gone to 30 in 1.3 miles. So what we'll do is we'll slow down to 60. We'll just follow the signals. There we go. One mile to the 30 zone. Oh, is this a Gatwick Express thing coming the other way? It is. Heck, they can't have much turnaround time. I think, are they every 15 minutes down here? I mean, that's still a fairly decent service, isn't it? When you factor in the fact that there's all the southern trains as well. Oh, look, a plane going over. Ah, I remember this. The planes go over, like, every ten seconds, don't they? Like, far too frequent. I know for a fact that we're running a lot slower into here, you know, we're, we're really taking our time. But it's not the end of the world because, I mean, look, we're not due in for another four minutes. We're arriving ridiculously early. I, can't get, I really can't get over how early we're, we're arriving. We've done really well, haven't we? Right, hang on. Let's have, a, let's have a bit of you. Lovely. You know, I love a good screenshot. Yeah, we're arriving so early that we'll just, we'll just take our time. We'll take it nice and easy. Another train coming the other way there. Good lord, what's this? Oh, I, th I thought it said that we were off to the left. That must be what we were following. Oh, look, there you go. I said that we'd uh, get 166 there. That'll do. Bit of 15 up towards the signal. This is, uh, I don't know if they have different ways of doing things at London, but I believe up north we have 15 mile an hour or less coming up to a red signal. No, oh, look, he's got a green. Oh, and another plane could be flying over. Hell, they come in at some speed, don't they? Right, well, yes, here we are. We are arriving into Gatwick Airport, where we are terminating today. I really do hope that you enjoyed that. I most certainly did. I've always enjoyed this route, so it's uh, it's quite nice to be able to play it in Trains in World 3. I've not really noticed much of a difference, it has to be said, between the two routes, uh, between the two games, but it's certainly an enjoyable sim to play. Let me know what you thought in the comments. If you have enjoyed uh, this particular trip today, please do click that like button. It's always appreciated by myself. And if you haven't already, do make sure you subscribe because there's plenty more exciting things to come for Trains in World 2. And I uh, Trains in World 2, you see, there we go. That's how uh, not different it is. I uh, tell you what, instead of playing with the camera, let's just get out. There we go. Open me the door. Ah, lovely. Yeah, um, there's so many more things to come for Trains in World 3. Uh, on this channel, so make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Other than that, thank you so much for watching, and hopefully, I'll see you all next time. Cheerio! Goodbye for now.